Is that how far y'all got? It opens up. Good job, good job. All right. With with the oh the calculator yeah you're gonna yeah at the very end when you get an answer well the way you can do it to make it stop doing that mm -hmm. is like go go uh, square root twenty eight yep square root is right there square root twenty eight put twenty eight point zero yeah and then hit enter now it'll give you the decimal. Okay. And then divide it the No, then you have to do uh, three plus that. Oh, so. I did the C instead of okay. the Yeah. Here, I have my vertex right here. Okay. I think you said if you try to do it, I have my X intercept like five six four. Mm -hmm. And my Y intercept is gonna be zero point two. Oh that's not your Y, that's your other X intercept, right? Oh is that what it is? Yes. Yeah. Okay, so well so Your Y intercept should be two. Oh, yeah, okay. My Y intercept should be two. Oh, because the C, right? Yep, the C right there. Okay. So anyway. Up two, yeah. Okay, I'm gonna I'm gonna start putting this uh, very quickly up here. Quadratic, yes, opens up since A is one. Third step is the vertex. K is f of 3, which equals 9 minus 18 plus 2, which is going to be negative 7. Is that right? Negative 7. Y'all get negative 7 on that? Yes. 4. Quick sketch. We go to the right, 3 down, and it opens up. So we're going to have two x-intercepts. So we set this thing equal to 0, and that's going to be negative b plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4 times a times c, all over 2 times a, which is equal to 6 plus or minus the square root of 36 minus 8, 28 over 2, and that gives us 0 point, what is it, 3, 6? I got 3, 5. 3, 5, something like that, and then 5.6. 5.6. All right, step 5 is the y-intercept, which is going to be C equals 2, 6 is the graph, so we go to the right, 1, 2, 3, and we go down 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. So this is the point 3, negative 7. You have an x-intercept, point 3-ish, and then 3, 4, 5, here's 6, so somewhere around there. Y-intercept of 2. There's kind of like this axis of symmetry through here. So it's going to go like this and like this. That's basically it. Okay, so hopefully you're able to get that. Okay. So you can see how that quadratic formula part, right, was ju is just one little element of the bigger picture. If you can't get that right, then this whole thing is going to be off. All right. Good? All right. So now let's talk a little bit more, more about quadratic functions. We'll, we'll take a break in a minute. Did record okay. So, quadratic functions. I'm gonna need a volunteer here. So yeah, okay, go ahead. <laughs> you just stand, stand right here. So I'm gonna be tossing a marker across the room. And just I want you to watch the marker as it goes through the room, and you're gonna catch it, right? Okay. Go back. Okay, so notice the path of the marker through the air, the shape of, of the path, okay? That shape, no matter how I throw it, it's all right, it's a bad throw, bad throw, one more time. Okay, here, we'll do it one more time. This, next time you throw it to me, throw it to me pretty, pretty fast, but, but yeah. Okay, you see that? Good, we're done. Every single time we tossed these through the air, it was like this, right? Mm -hmm. 
that shape is a parabola always. So any object flying through the air on any planet with gravity must travel in a parabolic path, right? So if you look at the history of humans and what we've done as far as technology, one of the things that we had to figure out is that paths of projectiles are parabolic. Once we understand that, then you can start to predict things that are going to happen. So like, you know, I like to use the analogy way, 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 way back in the day, you'd have a castle. This is a castle. It's super impressive, I know. Okay, so that's a castle. And then what, what did all the people in here are happy living their lives? And then, out, then you'd have this other group of people who, who didn't necessarily believe in the same things they believed in, right? So what would these people do? They'd come storm the castle, right? We're going to go in there. We're going to kill, kill all the men and take all your gold and food, right? Y'all look like, yes. yes, right? I mean, this is what humans like to do to each other. So, so what would they do to storm the castle? They start lobbing stuff in here, right? Start throwing, you know, fireballs and rocks and, right? And they would, they would try and eventually get these people to just surrender, surrender at some point or something, right? Or, well, all of these little parabolic paths, right? If they had an understanding of the mathematics behind this, the fact that there is a, a function, f of x equals ax squared plus bx plus c, if they understood that these parabolas were functions, right, then where this projectile is going to hit over here actually corresponds to an x-intercept, doesn't it? I mean, that is an x-intercept on the parabola. You're laughing. Why are you laughing? Right? Yeah, Does this seem unrealistic? <laughs> so you could, you could just lob and hope, right? You can lob and hope, and maybe eventually you get the castle. But what if these people on this side understand the math also? And they start lobbing things at you, and they can actually put it right on you too, right? Right? So these are x-intercepts of parabolas. So the, 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 the people with the understanding of the math are going to actually be more efficient. They're actually going to cause more damage than the other people will, right? So in nowadays, modern technology, right? When you, you, our military has these huge artillery, you know, these things that shoot these huge rounds. I mean, I'm not exaggerating. These huge things, miles through the air, right? This parabolic path. These people who are running these artillery, um, I don't even know what they're called, but missiles. they're not missiles because they're not rockets. They're, they're just, they're, they're like rocks. Okay, once they leave, once they leave the cannon, it's just gravity. Okay, missile's different because it's got a rocket. It's, it can be steered sometimes, so that's different. But if you're just lobbing a projectile through the air, you don't want to start lobbing, right? We can, we can hit targets, you know, five feet, five foot, three miles, four miles away. We can hit it. And, and that's because there's a computer within the artillery that is actually computing all the mathematics behind that projectile, taking into account wind, taking, uh, taking into account humidity, all the different factors that could affect the projectile's motion. But at the, at the, at the base of it all is a parabola, all right? So understanding quadratic functions has actually been helped us move on. And I don't think anyone here would deny that our desire to kill each other on this planet has pushed technology, right? I mean, like, that has been a huge motivation for technology to advance, right? Like the internet, right? You all know why the inter internet was created? Why? You said why. You said you knew, so. It was, like, for the military. Yeah, so what was the idea behind the internet? It was the military, but what was the idea behind it? To go and figure out, hold on, I'm going to draw the United States for you now. <laughs> that's, no, that's, that's the United States. I'm not sure what map you looked at or learned from. <laughs> so the, the, the idea was that during the Cold War, which was the war that we had with the Russians where we were 
pointing nuclear weapons at each other. So, kind of, but not as much. I mean, it was like back then they were doing, you know, like nuclear fallout drills in elementary school. You know, like it was a lot different. Any day could be the end. So the idea was that we had all these uh, missile silos all over the United States that, you know, they were, they were <clears throat> command, they were basically controlled by like one location. So if, if the Soviet Union, former Soviet Union, launched a nuclear strike at our main command center and knocked it out, then we couldn't launch a counterattack. It was, we have background music for this also, <laughs> right? Not quite the music we need for this sort of global ending of existence, but um, all right, so, so the idea was that if they could knock out our communications, our main hub, then we can't la launch a counter strike. So what we did was we created a communication network that you can't take off the grid, you can't wipe it out. And that's basically using all of our existing phone lines. Because instead of doing that, we used our, our already existing phone lines, which connects everything together, right? And then if they knock out one place, it's not going to knock out the whole network. And so the internet was kind of created for that purpose of not having a centralized communication hub. Does that make sense? So again, technology, mathematics has been a motivator for a lot of, you know, wanting to hurt others, wanting to save ourselves has pushed technology. The nuclear weapons themselves, right? World War II. Mm -hmm. Who was going to get it first? Right? Whoever got it first was going was gonna to win. Okay, whoa. All right, so what, what are we doing? We're talking about <laughs> parabolas. Well, I have another thing for you. And we'll take our break, don't worry. I have another thing. This is all, this is all leading up to something. Right? I'm not just talking random nonsense here. I have one more thing. And that is this little demonstration. It's going to get a little loud here up front. This is going to be the splash zone. It's not a popper. No, 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 no. I'm not going to do that. No, no. It's going to get loud, though. Okay, so um, I have a book and I have a piece of paper. And I'm going to drop them. All right, so the book, when it hits, going to be loud. A little bit. Okay? So it, I want you to think, you know, which is going to hit the ground first. All right? You got what you think is going to hit the ground first and then why it's going to hit the ground first. So here, ready to go? Here we go. Three, two, one. Ooh, that was really loud. <laughs> that was loud. Sometimes it's not that loud. Okay, so the book hit the ground first, right? Why? Is that what you thought was going to happen? I, I hope that's what you thought was going to happen, that the book would hit the ground first. But why is it that the book hit the ground first? Heavier, air resistance. Any other? More dense. So let's go with, the, with this idea that, and most people will say this hits the ground first because it's heavier, all right? Most people say that. So let me, let me challenge your idea. If you think it's because this is heavier, it's falling faster than this one, then what would happen if I put this paper on top of this? If you think it's because it's heavier, then what should happen is as they fall, the book should fall away from the paper, shouldn't it? Because it's heavier, so it's going to fall faster? Right? If you think it's because it's heavier, it's going to be dropped again. You ready? <laughs> and look, there's no tape. I don't have any glue or anything up here. Here they go. Ooh, that was louder, I think. They both went together. Did you all see that? Yeah. And the reason is, has nothing to do with the weight. The mass or the density has nothing to do with the rate at which they fall. The thing that affects the paper is the air. The air resistance is what slows this down. That's like when you have a parachute, right? Jump out of a plane, they do a parachute because that, that creates a, re, uh, a, a resistance. And the air slows down the person in the parachute. If you just jump out with no parachute, nothing's going to, well, you do slow down though. At some point you get, you don't, you don't go, like if you jump out of an airplane way, way, way up, you will hit what's called terminal velocity, which means that your body is now acting like a parachute. Like there is a maximum speed that you can reach if you jump out of a plane. There just is. 
You just don't keep speeding up, speeding up, speeding up. So the moral of the story is this, that on Earth, everything drops at the same rate if you take air away. So if we could somehow take air out, which I know we can't, but if you can, then if you drop a feather and a hammer together, they would, they would hit the ground at the same time if there was no air on Earth, all right? And with that, we're going to take a break. And I'll, I'm going to continue. I'm going to show you a video of that, of, of that happening when we come back. And we'll come back, let's say, 1230, okay?
where um, scientists were saying, yeah, you know what, the, the Earth is, no, is not the center of the universe, and they were actually put to death for that. You know, so this, this video is kind of like, a, hey, you know what, we were right all along, you know, we're going to show you, we're going to drop a hammer and a feather. You should pay attention. When science says something's true, you should pay attention. So this video is not a very good video. Obviously, this is not your high def that you're used to. Here we go. I don't even know if you can see it. There we go. Now, they seem to drop slow, right? And that's because on the moon, there's about one third the gravity as there is here. So the things drop slow. But you see they fell together, right? So if you don't like that video, I have another one here. This is, this is a, an actual vacuum chamber that was built. I'm not sure where it is. But they have a bowling ball and a feather. I have not watched this video. <coughs> More than one feather. So here we go. We've got a bowling ball and we've got a bunch of feathers. They're going to take them up on a crane. This is a vacuum chamber, so they pumped all the air out of this big chamber. Is that a guy standing down there? What's he breathing? Oh, the air is in there. Okay. The air is in there right now. Okay, that's why he's standing there. All right. So they dropped it. Okay, so this is in the vacuum. So now they've taken the air out, and you can see them dropping together. So the air is the only thing that, that matters when it comes to things falling on Earth. And so for a long time, um, for a long time, <clears throat> mathematicians and physicists were saying, well, if everything drops at the same rate, then maybe there's some formula that will tell you how far something has dropped after a certain amount of time. In other words, if I drop a rock or a book, if the air isn't there, then after one second they should be at the same place, right? After two seconds they should be at the same place. So the distance that they travel should be the same as a function of time. And they did a lot of research and it's been proven pretty easily now that there is a function that tells you how far something has fallen after a certain amount of time and here it is. I'm going to write it down, then I'll explain everything in a second. That's the formula right there. All right, so I want you to just take a look at that. And I'm going to tell you what everything is in this formula. First of all, T is time measured in seconds. All right. So that T is time, that T is time. Uh, let me explain what this is. D with this little subscript zero, we call that D naught or D sub zero. This is your starting height. And that's measured in feet. And then this V with the little zero here, V naught, is your starting velocity and it's positive if up negative if down I'll explain this all right let me just write it down first and then D of T is the um, height the height of object after T seconds. All right, so let me, let me try and run through all of this. <clears throat> if I have an object and I drop it, right? If I take this pin, I drop it, the height, let's say from here to the ground, that would be my starting height. So maybe that's like six feet, okay? That means this would be six. Once I let it go, the clock starts. If I say, what happens after one second? If I plug one in for T, this will spit out the height of the object after that many seconds have gone by. All right? Make sense? 
Now the V naught, this part's the part that, that messes people up. So if I just drop the object, then I'm not, I'm not giving it any speed, as opposed to, to me doing this. See how I threw that one down, right? If I throw it down, it's obviously going to get to the ground faster, isn't it? Let me do it again. I'm going to drop this one. I'm going to throw this one. So that one got there faster. So if I give it, thank you, if I give it an initial a starting velocity, then that's going to change the formula. I could also drop this one. And instead of throwing this one down, I can throw this one up. And then, let me see if I can do this. Obviously, the one I threw up is going to get there at a different time. So this number right here controls if you just let it go, or if you throw it down, or if you throw it up, okay? Um, what else is here? Yeah, that's it. So that is the formula. So let me give you a specific example of this, all right? Let me give you a specific example. What if I tell you that for this specific object, d of t is equal to negative 16 t squared, Man, these. plus 40. Can you look at that and tell me what's going on with this object? Like, yes. Yeah, the negative 16 is always in the formula. Do you see that? I was going to ask you about that in a minute. Why is that? Yeah. I will ask you that in a minute. But from this, if I'm telling you this is representing a falling object, can you tell me about this object? Like, can you tell me anything about it? It's, it's started at 40, yeah, it's falling, but it started 40 feet high, right? This object is starting at 40 feet high. This is the number by itself, right? Right here? Okay. Now, do I have a t term in this formula? Just t? No which means my initial velocity, my starting velocity, is zero, right? Which means I'm just dropping it, okay? I'm just letting it go. And then this part's always here, right? So this is just me dropping an object from 40 feet high. This formula will tell me how far it's gone or how high it is after t seconds. So what would be the height of this object after one second? After one second, after one second, I would plug one into the formula. I get negative 16 plus 40, right? One squared is one and subtract, what is this? 24. So this object that started at 40 feet high, if you let it go, starts falling, right? After one second, how high is it now? It's 24 feet high off the ground still. So it still hasn't hit the ground, right? Yeah or no? Yeah, okay. So, but do you recognize this? I mean, do you recognize this? Does it look like something to you? Yeah, doesn't this look like, like AX squared plus like some number in front of a variable plus some number by itself? I mean, isn't that just a quadratic function? Yes. Uh, of course. Yes. So we're talking about height at sea level? Well, the height relative to whatever you want it to be. We have to, we, you would have to say whatever the height is for you. So like right now in this room, right, if I, if I drop it, if I say it's six feet high, it's six feet high relative to the floor here. Now relative to the outside ground, it's a different height. So we have to have like what is zero? And zero can be sea level if you want, or it can be zero is the ground right here. It doesn't change the fact that if I'm calling this six feet, that after one second it will have gone a certain number of feet. So where I drop it from really does not matter. Well, it kind of does though. I mean, it depends on how, it does because the further away you get from the Earth, the, the less the gravitational forces. So you could, but if, I mean, if all things are equal, you know, we're, we're kind of all somewhere around sea level or within a mile or so, this formula should work. The formula gets much more complicated. I need, I need to take this call. Sorry, I forgot to tell you I was expecting.
So um, getting back to, that's a great question. Is this sea level? It's just relative to whatever you want it to be. Is that OK? OK. Um, so if this, what we, what we found was that if you just take air out, what we deal with with objects falling on, on Earth is, is just a quadratic function. So it would be important for us to, to understand how quadratics work, right? I'm just trying to show you that there is a value to a quadratic function. That's all I'm trying to show you. Um, now, the negative 16, that has to do with gravity. So on Earth, gravity is constant, and so that's where that comes from. If you move to a different planet, this number's gonna change, but that's the only number that changes. So we go to the moon, this number changes, but this, the formula, the rest of the formula stays the same. Okay? If you could go to the moon. All right? One day, one day, one day. All right. All right, so um, I'm still trying to sell you on the idea that parabolas are good things. Uh, Y'all don't look sold yet? What about um, shooting a basketball? Oh, is it an object traveling through the air? Absolutely. Now, when, you know, when, uh, who's, a, who's a basketball player that you like? Okay, so when he's shooting, he's not saying like, you know, f of x equals ax. This <laughs> bx, you know, that's not happening, right? That's, that's a different thing. But have you ever seen a baseball game where, I don't watch baseball, but I know they hit the ball and the ball goes out and it hits the stands and they say how far that ball would have gone, right? They, they'll say like that home run was 400 feet, 420 feet, but it hit the stands, so how do they know where it would have gone, right? Well, all they're doing is they're saying the ball hit, and then here's the stands, right? They're saying, okay, hit here. They actually are able to compute this parabola. They, they can find the function for it, and then they can project what this x-intercept would have been. So that's what they're doing when they're giving you that number. They're taking the stands out, but they're using math to do that. Is that because they measure the speed? That all they have to do is, you know how for a line you only need two points yeah. to define a line? For a parabola, you only need three. So they know where the ball came off the bat, they know where it hit the stands, and they just have a way of measuring where it was at one other point. Once they have three points, they can find a unique parabola through the three. And they use this thing called uh, quadratic regressions, but beyond the scope of this class. Um, all right. Do we like parabolas yet or no? No? Does anybody here drive a car at night and turn your headlights, turn your headlights on, right? Okay, you're using parabolas. You know, your head, we know that when we turn a light, like a lamp on, if you have the light bulb, here's my light bulb, right? The light goes in every direction, doesn't it? Okay, but inside your your headlight, what they do is they put a light bulb, I'm gonna do it sideways, now, it might not be a light bulb just like this, but it's a light bulb in there, and then what they do is they wrap it around it a parabola, like this, and they make that parabola, it's, it's actually three-dimensional, it's like a cone, kind of like that, around your light bulb, and that cone is coated in a reflective material, usually like a mirror-type material, but the shape of that is a parabola, now it's sideways, but it's a parabola. And the, the idea here is that if you use the shape of a parabola, then every beam of light that comes out will reflect, will bounce, and will come straight out. So even the ones that come out back here come straight out, all of them. So what you get is a beam of light as opposed to the spread out light. You can focus it. If you've ever used a flashlight, where you turn the thing and the beam goes like that, narrows in. All you're doing is moving, you're moving the parabola back and forth, and what that does is it changes this, this spread of the beams. But that shape has to be parabolic. If, it's, if, it's, if you just take a circle and cut it in half and put a light bulb in there, you're not gonna get a beam of light. This shape, this half circle is not a parabola. Parabolas are different than circles, all right? Still, still not. Anybody here use a, use a cell phone? <laughs> yes. So could you call? Could you call the other side of the world right now? Could you right here make a call?
to a person over here. Okay, how's that working? How's that happening? I'm assuming a parabola. It's a parabola, right? So how does it work? Well, you make your call here, right? And there's some tower sitting there. Somewhere around here, there's a tower, right? And your phone is sending a signal to that tower. Now that tower has on it these very, you've seen, have you seen these towers? They have these big like things on them like that. Have y'all seen these? Yeah. Just go, maybe you've never noticed them. They're all over the place though. These towers have these big rectangular things on them. But what they actually are, is here's the rectangle. If you were able to look through them, they're a little parabolic thing like this. It's parabolic. So what's happening is your signals are going from your phone. Here's you with your big old flip phone, okay? And your signal's going out in every direction. And some of the signals go in here and they hit, they get caught in here, and it does the opposite of the headlight. Instead of, instead of the beam of light being spread out, it takes this and it, and it reflects into this receiver, which catches that signal. So it's like taking this big, it's looking in this direction, it's taking all this information and focusing it into one point. And that's, that's your phone call, right? Goes here, goes into this tower, then goes into some, land, some line, and then that gets sent out to a satellite that's sitting in outer space. That has a parabolic receiver on it. It receives your message and then transmits over to this other tower, and that person gets that call, and it all happens at the speed of light. So it's like all the way across, right? And you're talking and there's usually very little lag. It's amazing, isn't it? That you can say something here, it goes through all these different things and winds up coming out this person's earpiece, right? And you can have a conversation. It's all parabolas though. You have to have the parabola. Okay. It's not really the speed of light, is it? It is, yeah. It's, it's electromagnetic radiation, which is speed of light. Now it's not, I mean, there's lag because the receiver has to take the signal, process it, convert it, send it. That's what's slowing it down though. It's traveling at the speed of light. 186,000 miles per like second. Study that? Like heavy? Like yeah, I mean, like yeah. Heavy, heavy because like that's why you light. have your phone. Because okay. somebody, that's what I'm trying to get at here is that in this class, like we're just gonna talk about parabolas. Why are we graphing them? But you know what, someone had to keep studying this stuff further for us to have these modern day first world things we have, right? It's all there, it's all in the background. Someone had to do some heavy research. Every, every car you get in, every bridge you get on, somebody has done a lot of mathematics behind that, right? Would you agree? Okay. All right, I think I've sold you. Have I sold you? I mean, yeah, parabolas are good. <laughs> what review? What, huh? Yeah, well, we have one more type of problem to cover though. Sorry. We're gonna talk about the review. <clears throat> it feels darker in here. Is it, is it me or is this? No? Seems darker. Just me. Do y'all know about 5G that's coming? Yeah. While we're talking about it, do y'all know what it is? Yeah. So y'all know right now you're on your phone, you're sitting there, you're trying to watch some YouTube or something, right? And then sometimes it gets slow. And I mean, imagine, you know, 10 years ago, we didn't think we were going to be trying to watch high def, like, 4K video on our phone walking down the street, right? Like that wasn't perceived as being needed, right? Now everyone wants it, right? And who knows, maybe one day you're gonna have some sort of device that you wear where you're just always streaming your life, right? Don't laugh, I mean, it, it's gonna happen. Everyone's gonna have their own stream. You're gonna, you know, you'll have the people in your life that you allow to watch your stream and it'll show everything you're doing that day. You're always, no? Y'all looking at me like I'm crazy. This sound crazy to you? It's happening right now. The only difference is that it's all in, it's all, it's all in, te in not text, but it's all in, in alphanumeric, right? Like 
but people are sharing videos of what they're doing, right? Like right now, I'm sure you could go find out what your friend's doing, but what if you could just log into their live stream, like what they're doing right now, if they wanted to share that with you? So what I'm getting at is that's a lot of data that has to be going around, right, through the air. A lot of data. So 4G is what we use now. Those are those big towers, those big towers that you see every few miles. And those towers are getting all this information from all these different people, right? And not only, this tower is being shared by, you know, AT&T is using that tower, um, Verizon's using that, they're sharing the tower. Okay, there's only one tower, the companies are paying to use it. All right, so you got all these people, you got all this data trying to go through here and it's too much data. At some point it becomes too much. So you need to have something that, that's faster than this. And 5G is the next thing. So you know how we have Wi-Fi? Isn't Wi-Fi always faster than, than like when you're out on your phone? Mm -hmm. Right, Wi-Fi at home is always faster. So basically 5G is like, like Wi-Fi at home. But the drawback to it is that you can't use towers anymore because these towers aren't strong enough signal. They can't capture the signal and can't transfer. So what's going to happen? You, you probably don't even know this, but you know, you're, you go down the road, you're going to have a building, right? There's going to be a building and then there's, you know, whatever, you know, HEB and there's the gas station and on everywhere, all over the place, there's going to be smaller versions of these and they're going to be like all over the place and they'll try and hide them. But we're going to have smaller towers in more places. And so, you know, it's, that's what 5G is. So until they actually do this, like they're talking about selling a phone with 5G. Don't, if you go buy a phone with 5G right now, you're doing that just for the novelty of saying you have it. Because this doesn't exist yet. This infrastructure does not exist yet. Certain cities are starting to implement it, but full like 5G coverage everywhere is not there. We're probably a good 10 years out from everyone having 5G but that's the next step. Okay, parabolas. We need parabolas, right? There, we couldn't update our status or anything like that if we didn't have parabolas. We couldn't let people know that we're eating at Payway. My daughter like, will take a picture of her food. I'm like, oh my God, <laughs> who cares what you're eating? All right, sorry, I'm just showing my age. What do we need to be able to do on the test? What do we need to be able to do? Yes, you need to be able to sketch, which we did, but you also need to be able to do a word problem. All right, so I'm gonna give a word problem right now, and this will be the last thing we do. All right, so here we go. Let's say D of T equals um, negative 16 T squared plus 15t plus 200 gives the height of an object in feet after T seconds. So I'm using the formula I just told you that is for all objects on Earth, right? So this gives the height of an object after, um, in feet after T seconds have gone by. Here are some questions for you. First, find the initial height of the object. Can anyone tell me that answer without doing any work? 200. It's 200 feet, right? Okay, but we'll get to that. Uh, part B, find the maximum height of this object. Can anyone tell me how we would do that? Multiply by second. Mm, what is this asking? This is saying, look, you've got some object, right, that's flying through the air in a parabolic path, because all objects. 
Okay, so this has to do with the vertex, doesn't it? Remember, if this, if this is a parabola that opens down, how do we know it opens down? Because it's negative 16. We know that it has a highest point, right? So part B is asking for you to find the maximum height of this object, which means to find the highest point, kind of. It's not exactly that, but we'll, we'll get to it when we get to it. Part C, when does it reach its maximum height? In other words, how much time does it take for this thing to reach its maximum height? And finally, when does it hit the ground? All right. So I'm going to draw up a quick picture over here. This is a parabola that opens down, right? OK, so I'm just going to draw a quick picture like this. t is our variable instead of x, right? t is our variable. So what is part A of this problem asking for on this picture? The initial height. So if time is this axis the initial height would correspond to what part of this picture? Paris? OK, the question is, if this picture is basically the picture of this parabola, because it opens down, part A is asking us for the initial height of the object. Where on this picture is the initial height? This is time. This is height. So over here, would, time would be positive, right? OK, over here, time would be negative, right? Which doesn't make sense. What would time be here? Zero. Zero. An in, in initial height means the time at, or the height at zero, right? So the height at zero would correspond to this point, wouldn't it? This is part A. And part A, then, is really just asking you for the y-intercept, isn't it? This is asking you for the y-intercept. And what is the y-intercept of a quadratic? It's always just C, isn't it? OK. Find the maximum height of the object. So we've started talking about this a little bit. It has to do with this point, right? But remember, this is an H and a K, right? It's two different numbers. It's h and k. So finding the maximum height of the object, which one is it? Is it h or k that they're asking for? It's k. Because remember, this is, this is h is, is this, right? That's time. And then k is the height. So this right here is what we're looking for for part b. Christian, what are they asking for in part c? Yeah, th so this right here, there's a certain time at which we would reach the maximum height, right? This right here is K. That's how far off the ground you are. Oh. This right here is how far you go out this way, which would be the H, right? <clears throat> so the H is a time and the K is a height. So in part C, they say, okay, look, when does it reach that maximum height? There they're asking for the H. Do you all see this? And then last but not least, Jared? Where's Jared? All right, over here. Jared? We well, you like caught, you, do you want to just tell me? I mean, you caught markers today already, so. Oh, true. I was just going to say it's that x intercept. It's the x intercept, exactly. It's saying, look, this is when it would hit the ground, right? So we want to know this x intercept. So do you see that in this problem, even though it's a word problem, there's, there's nothing in here that you haven't done already? Question? Both intercepts? Ah, good question. Is it both intercepts? Because there's another one back here, right? Okay, I'm going to do this one in red. Why are we going to ignore that one? 
because that's negative time. And so basically this picture only exists over here, okay? That picture only exists over here. The, the, the mathematics, the equation doesn't realize, like this function doesn't realize that this is, this is a word problem. It, it just says, hey, this is what I am. But it's only valid for t being zero or positive. So when we get our two answers here, when we find our x-intercepts, we are going to throw out the negative answer. Good question. All right, you ready to do it? Okay. Enjoy. Work on it, work on it. Give you some time here. What you're gonna realize here is that your numbers are gonna suck, okay? Like when you go to find your H and K, your vertex formula, you're gonna need to be using decimals. So work through this, see what you get. If you get all the answers for A, B, C, and D, let me know. I'm going to come by and tell you whether or not you're good. Help each other out, okay? Make a friend.